Welcome back to Smash Hit Sports. I'm your host, Cody. And Nick and I, we didn't take the week off, okay? We promise. We recorded an episode. Unfortunately, is in it, it is in the lost archives of, of podcasts where all podcasts go to heaven, and uh, that's where this one is at. It's dead. It's, it's gone forever. That being said, Nick, I think it was probably the best episode we've ever done. What, last week? Yeah. Yeah, you guys really missed out. I mean, my thing is, uh, are you really, like, do you really have a podcast if you don't have one episode that's just in the fucking shadow realm forever, you know? Like, we needed this. We checked it off the bucket list. We we dealt with the disappointment. Yeah. But it's okay. That's the risk you take when you have guests come on because we aren't responsible for their mics, their audio. You know, we can try our best and say, hey, like, make sure it works but it didn't sound uh very good at all sadly so yep so we'll uh we'll make sure to get the uh state of basketball podcast back on back on um they, they were they were some good dudes we also nick not to tease anything but we might be we might be making some real uh cool content here um in the next month or so so um be on the lookout. Make sure you guys are following our social media and like and subscribe so you guys don't miss that cool stuff. Like when I'm telling you, like it's going to be some cool shit, it's going to be some cool shit. But let's get into the college basketball because speaking of cool shit, I love seeing Kansas fail. It it, it brings warmth to my heart. Um, not that I really have any animosity towards Kansas as a whole, but like They've been really good for a long time. And and as a fan of a team that's not that, I hate to see sustained success. Right. Um, I also, Hunter Dickinson is a great villain. You need one every year in college basketball. Hunter Dickinson makes it for a phenomenal villain. But Kansas now has losses to UCF and West Virginia in conference play. Two very uncharacteristic losses for, you know, a Bill Self-led team. I think Kansas might be fraudulent. Like the oh, yeah. big F, capital F. What are your thoughts yeah. on this Kansas team? Uh, listen, I said it before. I might have said it last episode, so maybe no one remembers. But I don't think you can run your offense through someone like Hunter Dickinson. I just don't. Like, I, I, I think he's a fantastic player. But if your focus is to throw the ball down in the low post, hope you can draw a double, kick it out. The shooters aren't really existent. In Kansas, you have Nicholas Timberlake, who honestly showed us he has major hops on Saturday, but like yep. struggling from three. Dewan Harris is a, a known anti shooter. McCullough has become really good, but he's not a sniper by any means. You don't have that Ochai Abaji, the Malik Newman, the mm-hmm. Devontae Graham, these guys, Speed McKaylick, that you can kind of drive and kick or anything. And so when you have Dickinson, this big, you know, massive beast down there the double is actually pretty effective because the three-point shooting is not good enough i just don't like how it works i don't like how it looks i don't trust them and this is coming from a guy who i i have a kansas disease like i genuinely (laughs) i can't not pick them when it comes to march and luckily two years ago it worked out like the disease actually came to fruition and i won um but in years past it's like God damn it, I have to pick Kansas. I have to go with Kansas. And then they choke. This year, I think it's actually different. I can't say that for certain. We're a long way from March. But the way I feel about Kansas right now, they're a a second-round exit, in my opinion. I I really don't think they have any hymns on that roster that can will them. Um, And they're winning a lot of these games because they just play so well at Allen Fieldhouse. They're so good at home. Yeah. But we're seeing their true colors on the road against bottom barrel Big 12 teams. Like, this is not Iowa State and Baylor that they're losing to. This is UCF and West Virginia. West Virginia, not a good team. They are going to win, like, 12 games total on the year. That's just inexcusable. So, if they can lose to them, they can lose to anyone in March. I don't know if you agree with me or not, but it seems like you also think they're fraudulent, so... No, I, I also agree. And here's the deal with Kansas. Like, as far as conference play goes, they have not played the most difficult Big 12 opponents so far. Like, they, they barely beat Indiana on the road. And then they have wins against TCU, which required a ref's bailout at home. 
Um, then they lost to UCF on the road. They beat Oklahoma, which I also think Oklahoma is incredibly – Oklahoma is not a top 15 team. They're like they're good. They're a fun story. They're not a top 15 team in my opinion. But they have like they have Baylor yet. They have Houston yet. That like they have to go. They end their conference in a four game stretch. They have BYU. Then they have to go at Baylor, Kansas State, at Houston. That's yeah. gonna, like that's going to be tough. Gone are the days of like Kansas being able to waltz through to whatever, however many consecutive Big 12 regular season titles, it's going to be a rock oh. fight coming down the stretch. I don't know Especially if they got if, it. If this is how they're playing on the road, like you said, they kind of – they didn't handedly beat that Indiana team on the road. Indiana no. is a bottom five team in the Big Ten. Also, you look at that Kentucky win, which I think they played in Allen Fieldhouse. Kentucky didn't have, you know, Aaron Bradshaw, who's the 7-1 center that I thought was their – hidden gem that exploded but now it seems like kentucky has another hidden gem big z who i'm not gonna lie that is one of the most electric first halves of college basketball game i've ever seen in my life big z stole the show stole the season so far for me this kentucky team let's talk about the sec yeah okay because i genuinely look at this kentucky roster and can't think of a team that has had this much talent since 2018 Villanova when they had mm-hmm. like, you know, DiVincenzo, Brunson, Brunson Josh Hart, Vahart, Mikhail yeah. Bridges, Pascal, Spellman, like a plethora. And they, they coasted to the tournament championship and they cut down the nets at the end. Then there's also 2015 Kentucky, obviously, but like this team, they have 10 guys that can go out there and get a bucket at any given day. It could be Antonio Reeves. It could be DJ Wagner. Reed Shepard has the best plus minus in the world. It, yeah. What do you think about Kentucky well, or the SEC as a whole? So uh, to talk about Kentucky first, they're the exact opposite of what this Kansas team is. They have four yeah. or five guards that at any point could get you a bucket at any point. And that like, that's from deep. That's off the dribble. Like they apply pressure. They make like, they play with the pace that Kentucky is playing with reminds me of the 2011 year with John Wall and Boogie Cousins and Eric Bledsoe because they constantly are a th- are pushing the ball down the court to score and it's so much fun to watch they're great like you know, they're they're not great great defensively but they do enough defensively that like if you are not constantly putting up points it's going to be a problem with this Kentucky team now they've shown weaknesses at times this year but I also think this is not your typical Cal. Like when we've seen Kentucky teams make runs in the tournament, they were good from the first minute that they all stepped together on the court and that that carried all the way through the year. I don't think this is that. I think Kentucky has continually gotten better. Like they're a fun ass team. And I know they yeah. have that loss to Texas A&M. That was one of the best college basketball games of the year that was on the road. To, like, And it took essentially two 30-point games from Texas A&M to, in order to to get that win. Like, Kentucky's they, a they, good-ass they basketball a, team. I think they have a home loss to UNC Wilmington, which, like, which was, that, that confuses the hell out of you, too, right? It just doesn't make any sense. I feel like every team has one of those losses this it year. It seems like this year that's excusable, but – we didn't even mention like Rob Dillingham, who might yeah. be the best draft. Pro- like I think, if Dillingham's not playing in a structured Coach Cal system offense, he's putting up Trey Young numbers. Like if he's oh. on an Oklahoma or one of these teams where it's just like let let your best player cook, he could be putting up thirty five a game because he is that good shooting, getting to the basket, creating his own shot. And before he came in, a lot of people were saying, like, oh, he's a bit too small, you know, for the NBA. And he just plays too reckless. He throws up these shots that he should never make. He's, like, grown into this player that I am so impressed by that I think he should be a a top five pick in the draft. Um, And, like, Kentucky's shooting 40% from three on the year, which is second in the SEC. I think, like, top 20 in the nation. You're not really used to seeing that with Kentucky teams either. Like normally it's just a bunch of lanky athletic guys that yep. are learning how to shoot the ball. These guys are are all already good shooters. Even Aaron Bradshaw, the seven one guy, and Big Z, the seven two guy. Big Z they knocking down triples. And like I honestly think this 
offense is so talented that Kentucky's going into games and they're saying, we can just score as much as we want. And, like, if they score 96 like Georgia, it's okay because we still beat them by almost double digits. And they stopped trying it. They were at 100 with, like, four minutes left. I, I think by crunch time, by March, if everything is put together and everyone stays healthy, Cal is going to get this team to fight defensively. Mm-hmm. And what they can do on offense, this could be, by the end of it, this could be the favorite going into March. I, I truly believe that. They have but, put up 87 points. In every single game that they've played, dating back to the first week of December, they yeah. lost to UNC Wilmington and they put up 81 against Penn. They have scored 87 or more in every single game, and every single one of those games was either SEC play, Louisville, North Carolina, and then like Illinois State. But like, st- dude, it's it's crazy. It is, and and that North Carolina team defensively is incredibly underrated which i today north carolina played wake forest it, yeah that game's over north carolina dominated them defensively in the second half one of the better defenses and most underrated defenses in the country and kentucky neutral site put up 87 on them won the game by the yep. way like one of the games of the year for sure so yeah i'm not worried about the offense i just think that like we need to see this crunch time, like if anything changes, because I'd be shocked if they go into, you know, the SEC tournament and are just as lackluster as we've seen in stretches of time throughout games defensively. I would expect, especially with the amount of energy these players have, because you can rotate guys in and out. Dillingham only played 15 minutes against Georgia because they didn't need him. Yeah. You would assume that they're going to be, you know, Colin Sexton slapping the fucking court ready to go in your face uh, because they're all that talented. So I really feel really good about this Kentucky team, but there's a lot of talent in the SEC. Yeah. Like yeah. Tennessee still ranked ahead of them. And, and I think that makes sense. Rightfully right so like Tennessee with Dal- Dalton connect is everything. All of these Rick Barnes teams that we've watched throughout the years have needed a guy like Dalton connect. Like they've, oh my God. So they've needed this. And now that they have it, they are so much fun to watch because they can put up, they can have periods defensively where they just stifle you. And now that they have the scoring to go with it, like they are, they're a legitimate, legitimate threat. Like this SEC. And then we, what? We have three SEC teams ranked within four spots of each, three spots of each other in the yeah, AP top Auburn- 25. The way Auburn looks right now is they look like the best team in the country. Like the way they're playing currently, they don't have the resume necessarily to, you know, like validate that claim. But Mm I test even against Ole Miss, right? They went out, they were beating them by 30. Um, Ole Miss had their starters at the end and Tennessee had all their walk-ons or Auburn had all their walk-ons on. Yeah. And they're just like fucking swatting the ball off the backboard like dunking on people it 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 really feels like it's either they're peaking too soon or they're legit a one seed in the tournament we'll just have to see because they have a lot of tough games coming up including an alabama game um you know this wednesday or saturday i don't remember but with tennessee going back to tennessee dalton connect i don't think tennessee has ever had anyone that can just go get a bucket like that like that the best team they've had recently was that Grant Williams, Admiral Schofield, Jordan Bowen. Yeah, um, and, and Schofield, those guys were great. Schofield was that guy for a minute, but like he could never put it together consistently. Yeah, and it was never like it was always, you know, Schofield would hit like three or four threes in a game and have a great, great day shooting. But it's mm-hmm. like he put up twenty two points. Like Connect is putting up near forty points in like three straight games, getting yeah. to his spot, shooting like fifty percent from three. What we're seeing is just he's better offensively than anyone is defensively in college basketball. You can say it's because he's 22 and he's playing against freshmen. I don't know. But what confuses me is you look at NBA mock drafts and people are like, yeah, he he looks like a high-end second-round pick. It's like, dude, you can go get this true scoring talent who is just as a sure thing shooting the ball as as it gets. Why would you take him in a second? Like, he is – in my opinion, maybe going to sneak in to get in the Naismith this year. 
Um, and I mean, with the team around him, Josiah Jordan James, Sakai Ziegler, a lot of the same guys, Vescovy, they're ready. They're ready to go win now, 100%. He, he's going to have to go on a run to win the Naismith. Like he's, he's, he's going to have to go on a special, special run because we don't have this on our topic list, but Zach Eady has been just filthy for Purdue. Yeah. Like Zach he, Eady's, it's very hard to defend Zach Eady. Yeah. yeah. It's so, he's so consistent night in and night out. But um, let's talk about another team that has been absolutely fucking electric. And I, I say this as a guy, I grew up near Dayton, Ohio takes me about an hour and a half from where I grew up to get to Dayton, Ohio. Um, it is a school that is very, very passionate about their athletics program. Like they, they care a lot in a state that is predominantly a football state. Like that is what like Cincinnati football has been outstanding. Ohio state, like Toledo, these are, Schools that when you think about these schools first, the first thing that comes to your mind is the football program. Dayton has been absolutely outstanding. And they, I, I will say that they're definitely the most electric mid-major in the country. The question is, are they the best mid-major in the country? Yeah, which is at this point, after we're seeing you know Memphis drop to Florida Atlantic still struggling. Yeah. Um, I, I really like Princeton still this year. Like I love them, but I watched Dayton, Rhode Island. And I think I watched a little bit of Dayton, St. Louis, uh, mm -hmm. earlier last week. And I didn't really know much about Dayton. I kind of assumed that they were lower scoring a 10. They just played really good defense, you know, and, and just muscled their way to wins. And I was completely wrong because immediately in that game, their first like 10 shots were all threes and like eight of them went in. It was insane. Yeah. Like they're, they have so many shooters, which is exactly what you want come March, right? Like guys that it, it almost feels like if one guy's cold, the other guy's going to be hot. Like there's no way the whole team's going to be cold shooting. And if you have that, you're just going to have the offense to stick up with anyone. And they held Rhode Island to 62 points. They beat them by 40. And it's a Rhode Island team that, like, beat St. Joseph's. They're, like, not good, but they're fighting in the A-10. Dayton said, nope, like, we're going to crush you. Um, you know, Deron Holmes and Enoch Cheeks, who has a great jumper. I, I And a phenomenal I, name. That's that's such a beautiful a college name. basketball name. Enoch Cheeks. Um, yeah, I think he's, like, number eight. But he... Uh, just in total, I think you have to give them the, the most electric mid-major. And that's assuming that we're not counting um, the Mountain West as mid-major anymore. Because uh, to me, <laughs> I, the Mountain I think West has made over, it, dude. I think they've taken over the Pac-12 as as the, the other Power Six conference. Pac-12, they might be mid-major. And in that sense, maybe Arizona is the most electric mid-major team. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Yeah, they, Dayton has um, a very, like, they have a couple good wins on their schedule. Like, looking back now, like, the win versus LSU, they got a win versus St. John's, um, and they play Richmond on Saturday, which I think will be a really interesting game. That that game will mean a lot for the A-10 because Richmond's currently sitting in second. But, and I think they're 13-5, and five, so they've, they've got a pretty decent record too. But, yeah, dude, the Mountain West has been just absurd. And, like, when you look at the top 25, Arizona is sitting there at, at the nine spot. There is not another Pac-12 team in there. And you have yeah. New Mexico. You have Colorado State. You have Utah State cracking the top 20 at 18. Like, these, San Diego State. San Diego State looming behind, which they had the, one of the best players in the country for the first, like, five weeks of the year. Um but yeah, the, the Mountain West is is here. And like, I think they're here to stay too. With the Pac-12 being what it is in pretty much all sports, like you're not going to get, if you're Stanford or Cal or a lot of these other teams, like you are going to get guys who want to go play in the ACC at Stanford 
Or you're not going to, like at Washington, like you're not going to get guys who want to go play Big Ten basketball to come to Washington. And I, I think it's going to be really tough. I think these Mountain West squads are really going to separate themselves. And it's – Yeah. It's fun. I mean, like they already kind of had been, right? Like 2022 tournament, you had Colorado State with David Roddy making yep. it as a six feet. You've had Nevada, you know, with the Martin Twins – go on these runs and then last year san diego state makes it all the way to the championship game it's like you look at the last five six seven years and there's mountain west pretty much everywhere you look right like Mm -hmm. there's success stories all across the board whereas you look at every other mid-major and they have maybe one success story in the past 10 years and so in my opinion you just have to admit to yourself the mountain west is legit they play legit basketball it's weird because the back half of the Mountain West is still very mid majory, but yeah. those top six to seven teams that we're counting UNLV, they're extremely competitive. You have Nevada, Boise State, um, yeah. that aren't ranked, but that are Boise like, State with a great win over San Diego State this weekend, like one yeah, point like win. They're all fighting. Um, you know, it, it, as of right now, I think if you looked at bracketology there would be six Mountain West teams in, which I can almost guarantee is more than the ACC would have in today, which is crazy. And yeah. definitely more than the Pac-12. Yeah. I, I, who I, else from the Pac-12 makes it? Utah? Utah's got to be I the think, only other team that's a lock. I think the, yeah, I think that's the only other team that I really have like confidence in. You know what I mean? Like If I was willing to put money on it, I think I would put money on Utah. I don't think I'd put money on anybody, anybody else. Like Oregon yeah, is looking bad. Colorado. I, I yeah, don't. that's Colorado's been so up and down. USC. You want to talk they're about done. a team that's fallen off a cliff, man? Collier, Doing he's six in conference. Yeah, yeah. done. I think Collier's Oregon, probably done it. Yeah, at, Collier's probably he's gonna like do a little Kyrie Irving action, just not play at all. Yeah. To I, end the season, maybe come back. Well, they're not gonna make the tournament. No, it's wild. It's it's surprising. Um, Who's the coach out there? Enfield? Andy Enfield or something? Uh, I'm not sure. Whoever it is, uh, normally I feel like you hear praises about him. I think he's got to be on the hot seat to have this much talent and and this much like potential media attention and have oh, it just yeah. be thrown out the window. USC could be on right now, and I'd be I don't care. I don't care about seeing Bronny. They suck as a team. They're gonna lose. Like why watch them? So yeah, they got embarrassed by Arizona State. Like that's no, that's tough. Tough. Really, really brutal. Um. All right. Well, so we have a lot of games this week, but before we get into it, I want to do just a little blind resume segment. You know, bracketologies, Lenardi, Jerry Palm. They're kind of throwing out their bracketology today. It's Monday. You guys are going to be listening to this Tuesday or Wednesday. Um. But I'm going to give you three you know, comparisons and I want you to one, give me the seeds you think these teams should be. And then two, this is going to be hard, but if you can find some way to try to guess what the teams are, I'd be very impressed, but Oh yeah, we'll give her a shot. Blind resume. What do you think these teams could be seeded in current resume? Bracketology started today. We'll start with team one versus team two. Team one in the net is ranked 34th. They have three quad one wins. They are six and four against quad one and quad two competition. One bad loss, which is a quad three loss. In the RPI, they are 14th, and they have the 28th hardest schedule that they've played so far. Okay. The other team is 19th in the net. They have three quad one wins. They're four and four against quad one and quad two. One bad loss, 87th in RPI, and the 101st strength of schedule. If you need me to repeat anything, I will. Okay. So the first thought among that for the first team, I'm leaning big 12. I want to say BYU. I think it it is going to be my my guess for the first team. I'm going to say my second team. I'm going to say is FAU and blind resume wise. I will take the first team. So then how would you seed? It, assuming that those two teams are wrong, how mm-hmm. would you seed? Uh, how would I seed based on resume? Mm-hmm. Ah, I'm going to say... S- this might be bad because I'm not great at this, but I'm going to say 6-7. Six, 6-7? Seven. 
Okay, so I'll tell you that team one is Clemson. And okay. team two is Duke. So Stop. No way. Yeah. Yep. What? Yep. That's yep. crazy. Yep. So Clemson, worse in the net, better quad one and two record. Both yeah. have a bad loss, but Clemson, way harder strength to schedule, and then way better on the RPI. I didn't realize Duke's strength to schedule was that easy. Yeah. Wow. Uh, very easy. It's it's shocking. They haven't really played that much good competition. They're playing Clemson. I kind of did this because they're playing. Yeah, the matchup this week um, on Saturday. But it's fascinating to me uh, because again, Duke obviously is ranked. Clemson yeah. didn't even receive a vote by an AP voter. But you look at Jerry Palm's bracketology. Yeah. Clemson's a three seed and Duke's a five. Okay. I think resume wise, Duke being nineteenth in net is helpful. But mm-hmm. I think Duke resume is a six seed, and I think Clemson's is a four slash five. That's where yeah. I would have it. I don't think you were okay. far off in the six and seven range. Obviously, see, I was, I was thinking resume. next, like, I was thinking that next little bump down. But the fact that uh, Clemson didn't get any votes for the AP top twenty five is actually crazy to me because, like, uh-huh. Memphis it's at not- fifteen and four, like, eh, eh, I don't it, know, bud. The resume. It doesn't lie. This is this is your resume. It just makes sense. Um, all right. Next blind resume. Team one is 15th in net. They have three quad one wins. They're six and two against quad one and two. They don't have any bad losses. They're third in RPI. They have the 70th hardest uh, strength of schedule. Okay. Team two, 18th in net. So pretty much the same. Two quad one wins four and two against quad one and two they have a bad loss they are 44th in rpi and have the 96th hardest strength of schedule okay so i'd take resume one over resume two just more quality wins and they avoided that bad loss um that seating wise i'm gonna say three four seed um Maybe two, three, depending on what what the rest of this I, looks like. I uh, think I, I'm right there with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking two, three now, the more that I'm thinking about it, because they do, the, that first team has a lot of, of quality wins. I'm going to say, mm, I this might give me, I might go two Big Ten teams here. I might go Purdue and Wisconsin. Mm, okay. No. Damn. This is team one. And prepare yourself. <laughs> team one is Dayton. And team two is Kentucky. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Yes. Uh-huh. Isn't that nuts? I didn't realize Dayton, Dayton was like that. I didn't no, like, really either. But my what shocks me is that Kentucky's resume is just not like they have the UNC win. Dayton doesn't have a win like that. So obviously – yeah. It's tough when you think quad one, there's a difference in your quad one wins. Mm -hmm. But Kentucky having the 96th strength of schedule, Dayton being third in RPI is nuts. Kentucky obviously has a bad loss, but they've only played six quad one and two games. Dayton somehow as a mid-major team has played Played more. I see. I I didn't even, I wouldn't have guessed a a mid-major just because of the number of quad one wins. That's why I I thought it was Purdue because they played at Maui and all the other shit. Exactly. That's, so, damn. And, and, and I don't disagree with the 2 3 line just based on the resume or the 3 4. Yeah. But like, I think personally, right now, you look at this, you have to go Dayton 3, Kentucky 4. Yeah. Even though Kentucky's the sixth ranked team and looks electric and like they could win it all, just based on what it, the numbers say, They're, they should be a 4. Well, <laughs> and the thing with it, like, their defense holds them back in those rankings so bad. Because they their yeah. re- their defense is objectively not good, but damn, that's crazy. They're both they're both high enough in the net to, yeah. to warrant like two, three, four seed range. But it's wild that Dayton has the better resume by like a pretty noticeable amount. Yeah. So that was surprising to me. I didn't ever guess that. One, this isn't as close, but I am interested if you can maybe get these teams um, okay. or or seed them correctly. 
So you have Team 1, who's 20th in net. Two quad one wins, six and four against quad one and quad two. No bad losses. 27th in the RPI, the 11th hardest schedule in college basketball. Okay. Team two, number one in net. Might be a giveaway. Quad one wins. They have four, six and two, or yeah, six and two in quad one and two. No bad losses. Six in the RPI, but the 55th hardest schedule. What would you guess, say, or rank? I don't know who is one in the net. Um, I I'm gonna, I would take the second team. Um, yes, that's pretty clear. pretty you know pretty confident. Yeah, I mean yeah. And I like one one two line just kind of depending like they're they're right there and then that second one maybe three four but I it this this might be a crazy. I think the first one might be Alabama. And the mm. second, and the second one might be Houston. Okay, Houston is correct. Houston okay. is number one in the net. Okay, yeah, I I, 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 mean, I knew that they were one or two, so I I went Houston there. I'm glad I got that. I was, I was genuinely about to put Alabama as team one, but it's not Alabama. It's San Diego State, which is really surprising to me. Yeah, the like, damn like three four line, which the resume probably agrees with. Six and four against squad one and two is great. You have the 11th hardest schedule in the country and you're putting up those wins. Yeah. Right. You're See, 20th that's a, in the net. I wouldn't have like, guessed that because they play like, I thought Alabama's schedule is like unbelievably hard. That's why I went that, like that route, maybe like Arkansas, but I knew they didn't have a good enough record against quad one teams, but damn, it's San Diego state. That's the okay. thing. I think Alabama's record quad one and quad two is under 500. Yeah, for sure, right? Because they have yeah. six losses, so it's probably like four and six, maybe. Um, yeah. Whereas San Diego State is six and four, which is very impressive in my mind. Um, obviously, the quad rankings are based on the net, and sometimes the net is pretty subjective seeming. Yeah, but I I thought that was surprising because people are kind of saying like, well, they're not the same team as last year. It seems like they are actually the same team, and they could do the same thing. Um, and I kind of agree. Like, I don't know if it's three seed caliber, but they're right on that four or five line. Rest yeah. Wise. Yeah. And Houston, no, I, I think it's a one. Um, I don't hate that at all. Yeah. And, and, you know, I wish we could do it all day, but we should probably move on. Yeah. We'll we do this again next week uh, with some new teams. Well, there's just so much good line. basketball to be played, you know? Um, there is. And there's a lot to, to, to talk about. Absolutely. Before we get into the picks, just a reminder, um, if you guys like the podcast, do us a favor, like, subscribe if you're listening on YouTube. Um, subscribe if you're listening to the podcast version. If you are listening to the podcast version, leave a review. That helps tremendously with the algorithm, whether you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Um, a review goes a long way. It costs zero dollars to do, and it means the world to us. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. That being said, picks update. I didn't have as good of a week as I thought I did um, two weeks ago. And then this past week, we were actually dead even. We picked completely different games all over the place, and we ended yeah. up dead even. So we, we went 11 and five, right? Both yep. Of us. Yep. Both of us went 11 and five. So you're currently sitting at 31 and 17. The, uh, the basketball guy showing he does in fact know his basketball and I'm sitting at 29 and 19, which honestly Pretty good, Cody. two games back. I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling okay. This is the thing, Cody, is that like a lot of people that, you know, listen, that listen to all our college football uh, episodes where we did the same thing, but in college football, there's only so many games in a given week that could easily go either way. We yeah. had to throw like Alabama versus, uh, you know, Mississippi State in there yeah. because we just had to. And then obviously both of us go Alabama. Both of us get that right. We're doing our best here to put these games on, on, on this slate that easily could go either way. Yeah. And oftentimes we're picking the heavy underdog. Like we like this is. If at the end of the year, we're still like a good chunk above 500. We deserve a pat on the back. I'm just going to say that. So let's keep yeah. this streak going because 11 and five is great. Um, I mean, look, I picked point Indiana point. last week and still ended up positive. So that's true. <laughs> that was a do? tough start for you. That was, that was not, not that was the smartest. Ass beating. I also picked 
St. John's beat Seton Hall, and Seton Hall went on that 28 nothing run. Yep. Yeah, um, they went up. And, <laughs> you you put that on your Instagram story. It was just like, ooh, I know, yeah, I know, Nick like, is so feeling sorry. this one. I'm so sorry, Seton Hall. Like I, they were. It was 24 all. I was like, all right, St. John's, hold on here. Then I look again. It's 52 24. Yeah. Um. So it's hard. It's hard to get these right. But we have a good slate. We have two Tuesday games. Good chunk of Wednesday hoops. Nothing really Thursday. We got a Friday Big Ten game, and then a great slate on Saturday. Yeah. Let's start with Tuesday and what I think is a little cheeky under the radar game, Kentucky going into South Carolina, seven o'clock. Yeah. And South Carolina's pretty good. I was talking about this. I went um, live on my lunch break today and I had somebody ask like why, or what I thought about the SEC. Like, obviously there's the three teams that we talked about in the top 10. There are a lot of these teams that can fuck up any of those three teams season. Like South yeah. Carolina has had a good year. Georgia's had a good year. Like, Arkansas has not played up to their expectations, but they could beat anybody. Alabama could beat anybody. Alabama, Mississippi Texas State, A&M. Yeah. Ole Miss. Ole Miss. Was... The, the only teams that I would say aren't, I, like, wouldn't scare me as one of those top 10 teams are, like, Vanderbilt and Missouri. And then yeah. that's probably it. I, I'm not yeah. really scared of LSU either, even though they yeah. are three and two in conference. But the right, we didn't mention Florida. Florida can do it yeah. as well. Like this is, there are a lot of teams that are going to be fighting for that 11, 10 seed playing game territory. And it's going to be juicy. Like the end of the SEC schedule is going to be fucking electric with these games that like you win, you're in, you're, you lose, you're out type, yep. type vibe. Um, but we're looking at South Carolina who doesn't necessarily have like a bunch of great wins, but. They're fighting in there. I think they're three and two in the SEC. Um, you know, only three losses on the season total. Yep. They have wins against Grand Canyon, who's like a really good mid-major team. They're, I think that might be their only loss. Like I, I, no, they beat Grand Canyon. Their loss in the conference was to my Clemson Tigers. No, that's what I, I'm saying. That oh, might be oh. Grand Canyon's only loss. Oh yeah, is to I South think, Carolina. Right. Like I think they're I like think, fifteen and one. Yeah, it's that or something like that. There's no way they have more than two losses. They also beat a pretty good Virginia Tech team on a neutral court. They kept it close on the road against uh, Clemson. Like, they beat Mississippi State. They went into Missouri. They won. They just went into Arkansas and won. Like, it's not a resume that screams, like, tournament lock. But you can't deny you have three losses this late into January. This is a team that is good. And they warrant yeah. discussion, and they get to host Kentucky, who clearly hasn't necessarily figured it out defensively. So I think this could go either way. Who do you pick here? Yeah, I'm taking Kentucky just because the the firepower on any given night, their A plus game could beat anybody in the country. So I'm going to go with Kentucky, but they're going to have to show up early and often against South Carolina. Yeah, I am also going to Kentucky. I think there's a way that this ends up being like a 10 to 20 point win for Kentucky. And it's just a statement, mm -hmm. you know, game. Uh, but there's also a way it's really close, right? It comes down to the wire. Um, either way, I do see Kentucky pulling it out. Takes us to our other Tuesday game, which is Houston going into BYU. Houston number four, BYU still ranked 21. So it's a top 25 matchup. Uh, it's tough to play at BYU. They, they get crazy. They kind of get a little racist over there. But BYU <laughs> 10 and one at home. They are. They're, it's hard they have, to play there. Yeah, they're one and three on the road, but ten and one at home. Like that is a tough yeah. place to play. And that one loss was to Cincinnati. I remember. I think that was like week one of our our yep. picks, and I think we both went BYU. We were both like, "What the hell? How did this happen?" Um, you know, this is a Houston team. We just went over the blind resume. Their strength of schedule is only fifty fifth. They're playing in the Big Twelve, where your strength of schedule should probably be top ten, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um. So this is like maybe one of their tougher tests. We saw they lost on the road to TCU. They lost on the road to Iowa State. It's not a shoe in that they win these road games. Um, who are you going? So I got to go with Houston. And the, I understand that like conference games on the road this year, like it's been pretty much like, hey, pick the home team, pick the home team. And it's been, it's been set it, forget it for the most part. That being said, Houston plays such phenomenal defense. I think that is that travels. So I'm going to go with Houston here. 
Um, should be a phenomenal, phenomenal game. I'm trying to look to see what the line is, but um, while I'm looking to see what the line is, what's your pick on this one? Yeah, I think this game really depends on how BYU's fans student section comes out and shows out because again, they're crazy, but like, this is the best team in the big 12 that you're hosting. This is your only chance to host this team and go beat them. So I'm expecting this to be one of the rowdier uh, arenas this season in college basketball. And if that's the case with the offensive and defensive efficiency metrics that BYU has, they're, they're a metric darling. They're one of like the three that don't really make much sense, but they are. And I think in that sense with the maturity they have, they, they're really old. Um, I, I mean, I think they just ride a little momentum and they pull away from Houston late and they win this game. I'm going BYU. Whose line is it anyway? What do you think the uh, line is on this one? Uh, I would guess that Houston is a two-point favorite. Three-point favorite. So Three-point favorite. Okay, yeah. Damn close. Damn close. Yep. And um, don't matter to me. I'm taking BYU. Yep. Uh, the Wednesday slate this week is really nice. Tuesday has a couple good games as well. Um, outside of these, like Xavier Creighton is, is a decent game. Um Florida State, Syracuse should be a, a solid game, but those teams aren't awesome. Texas, Oklahoma. Um, but Wednesday, Auburn at Alabama. This mm. game should be outstanding. I expect mm. points, points, points. I don't I don't know what the total is in this game. I can tell you that I'm betting the over. That That is what yeah. I know. Um, I, <laughs> I'm excited for this one. I'm going to be honest. Out of all of the games in the Wednesday slate, this is the one that I'm least confident about. I'm taking Auburn. This game, like Bruce Pearl, I, I can f- see the sweat already, like on his forehead and the sheen. Nate Oates, like he's going to be yelling at the refs. It's going to be a chaotic. I, I This is a must-watch game, but I'm going to take Auburn. Yeah, I mean, this is like a massive rivalry, right? This I know yep. it's basketball and not football, but like this still matters to the schools. Like we're going to see mm-hmm. chaos. We're going to see some physicality that probably goes a little too far. My thing is that like Auburn has not been getting, you know, enough media attention or as much respect as I think they deserve at this point. And yep. a little bit of it is probably because of the resume. It's not as great as it should be, but – I can just close my eyes and see them losing this game and a bunch of people that don't really watch college hoops are like, I, I, I like Auburn sucks. Like they, we knew they say unrank Auburn, Alabama owns you, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Where it's like this very well might be the only like bad loss Auburn takes all year, assuming Alabama doesn't even end the year rank ranked. Um, And so, like I, I feel pretty confident in Auburn season long that they could easily finish top 10, but in this specific situation, I think Alabama just needs it more. And, and I can just see, I can just see people hating on Auburn and th- that rivalry getting crazy. So I am going to go Alabama, but for reasons that don't have that much to do with hoops, more so just Fair. like gut calls and closing my eyes and, and, and visioning things. So we'll see, but yeah, it should be a great game. I don't know if you have any of the, the games or scores on around you, but uh, Cincinnati and Kansas is at halftime, mm. and it's tied. <laughs> That's not surprising to me at all. And it's in Kansas. And it's at, at Fog Allen. Um, That's great, Cody. I'm, I'm glad we both talked about how fraudulent they are just 20 minutes ago. <laughs> yep, we'll see if we're, uh, if we're proved They'll right. They'll pull away, I'm sure, but like, not, yeah. I don't know if they're going to cover. Yep. Um, number 10, Illinois, going into Northwestern. Anytime you got to play Boo Booey at home, like you got to be nervous. You got you got to be nervous. Um, Illinois has been a, a little up and down. Um, obviously, they have Terrence Shannon back. Um, how long that's going to last? I, I'm not. I'm going to be honest. Not 100 percent sure. We'll see how that situation gets flushed out. However, as long as he's on the court, this Illinois team really damn good. That being said, Northwestern. At home, so good at home, so good at home. So I'm taking so North. Good. I'm I'm taking Northwestern. This is a big time. Oh, conference road game. Take the home team. And that's what I'm yeah. doing. Yeah, especially the unranked home team. That's yep. definitely like an unranked dog. Actually, I don't even know if they're going to be a dog because Vegas is probably picking up on on this trend here. Um, yeah, but I 
I think there is something to be said about like getting Taron Shannon back and and you know getting that chemistry back and and mm-hmm. wanting to you know put a stamp on on themselves. Like this is still a Northwestern team that lost to Chicago State. Like this is not a, a this is a Northwestern team. team that beat Purdue. It is at home. <laughs> <they're right> home. <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens on the road if if that hasn't happened already, but. I I am gonna go Illinois, like you just said about Auburn, Alabama. I'm doing the same thing. Like I don't feel confident about this, but I'm going Illinois because I I don't know if Northwestern is gonna be a tournament team. And if they win this, I'll probably say, all right, yep, they are. But mm-hmm. like as of right now, I'm kind of thinking maybe they aren't, and I'm just gonna go with the sure thing in Illinois. But it's tough. I don't feel confident about it. So. Yeah, um, going on to a Big East game, Villanova at St. John's. Uh, neither of these teams are ranked, but this is a big, big game. Um, I'm taking Villanova here. And the reason being is I understand that St. John's is at home, but St. John's has been ice cold. Um, they did beat Villanova at Villanova. However, in their last three, St. John's has lost to Creighton, has lost to Seton Hall, and has lost to Marquette. Now, Two of those losses were by literally one point. And I know that we heard uh, Patino say that he would rather die than lose another game. Um, But I don't think he's going to get his wish. I think he's going to lose another game. So give me Villanova. Yeah. But he also, he, I know he had COVID uh, during like maybe two of those games. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't on the sideline. I know the Seton Hall game, they, they made that very clear when I was watching. They were like, oh my God. If Patino's not there and St. John's doesn't know what to do, yeah. which again, 28 0 run. I never seen anything like that in my life. That's insane. But that being said, Patino's back. Villanova played UConn really well. Um, you know, Justin Moore, healthy, Eric Dixon, um, TJ Bamba. Like, I, I still really like this Villanova team. I think at the mm-hmm. beginning of the year, I was like, don't sleep on Villanova. Yeah. They have disappointed me heavily. I want to pick them in this game. Um, but I yeah, they were like, top twenty. It, it, they were top twenty-five preseason. Yeah, they also like they beat UNC, they beat Memphis or whoever. Like I, I they have good wins and and they lose to UConn by one um, because Justin Moore can't stop fucking arm barring people. It they're very capable and they'll be on the bubble at the end of the year. But this specific game, I think St. John's just needs it more. They have Patino. They're at home. I'm gonna go with St. John's. Fair in now enough. a lot in a row, I think that we're differing on, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, um, it looks like Forest we're the State. we're the same on this next one, though. Um, okay. Colorado State at Nevada, um, the Mountain West has been pretty crazy this year. Like, Nevada's a solid team, um, but but I think Colorado State has a lot of talent, they're well coached. Um, and if you could give me the better coach team in a what should be a pretty even game. I'm going to take the better coach team. So give me Colorado State. Yeah. Isaiah Stewart, I believe, is the point guard there. They also have uh, Patrick like Garnier. Some f- is like a French uh, white wing who is a mm-hmm. bucket. Um, like I've watched enough Colorado State where I'm, I, I know they can beat and compete with anyone. Um, but again, this is a tough one where it's you're ranked. You're going into the unranked team's territory, yep. especially in the Mountain West. This is actually Nevada's like first – real chance i feel like all these other mountain west teams have gotten to host the ranked team nevada really hasn't Mm -hmm. so my gut is like well nevada should win here but jury's still out in nevada i feel like a couple of the jury still out game last week that we had went the way of the ranked team like the texas tech the jury was still out in texas tech and they lost both their games nevada i think the jury's out i think they lose i'm going colorado state yep um Moving on to Friday, uh, Michigan State at Wisconsin. We both picked Maryland to beat Michigan State last weekend, and Maryland pissed down their leg at the end of that game. Uh, Michigan State has now gotten a couple decent wins here, but you got to go into Wisconsin. What is their what's their arena? They got a great God. They got a great stadium. Yeah, there. I don't know. Um, it's not the like KFC Yum. That's Louisville. Yeah, that's Louisville. Um, I don't know why that came to my brain. Yeah, that is weird. Fog Allen Fieldhouse? What's Fog Allen? Cole Center. It's the Cole okay. Center. Fog Allen's, Fog, Allen? Fog Allen's Kansas, you idiot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Allen Fieldhouse. 
what are we, what are we doing? The Kohl Center. Um, that it, more, Wisconsin's a good team. Like, I, I have a preseason uh, bet for Purdue to win the Big Ten regular season. I think Wisconsin is the biggest threat to that. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm taking Wisconsin at home. This is a good team. I'm very excited for that game, that Purdue-Wisconsin game, Yep. Uh, whenever it comes to be. I'm also taking Wisconsin at home. These two teams played already. I think Wisconsin went into Sparty land and won in maybe mid-December. Um, but so, like, there's a little revenge factor there. But, again, mm-hmm. I, I, I just think this is, you know, I feel way more confident in Wisconsin. Um, Michigan State just won on the road, I believe. They were playing – Maryland on the road. So yep. getting two straight road wins is going to be really tough. If I will say, if Michigan state does go into Wisconsin and win, they're back They're I think they're almost like safely like in, if they do that, but right now they're it's very confusing still. And I'm, I'm going to pick them to lose, uh, but cool standalone Friday game uh, for us to watch. So that'll yep. be exciting. Absolutely. Um, rolling into the Saturday slate. Um, I'm actually I'm going to skip the first game because I want I want to give you a ridiculous stat. Okay, Kansas at Iowa State is going to be an awesome game. This stat has nothing to do with this game, kind of. Do you know who the leading scorer all time is for basketball in the state of Iowa? I'll give you a hint. It's not Harrison Barnes, and it is not um, fuck um, Dougie Dougie McBuckets. It's not Doug McDermott either. Harrison oh, Barnes, like high school. Yep, high school all time. He is a current college athlete in the state of Iowa, but it is not Harrison Barnes and it is not Dougie McBuckets, who would have been my thoughts for the all time leading scorer in the state of Iowa. Yeah, I mean, I don't. T- Tam and Lipsy. The, the I was like, uh, 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 is it fucking one of the kids? The McCaffrey kids, like Patrick McCaffrey or something? Nope. I have no idea. It is the fucking cold-ass white boy himself, Cooper DeGene, the corner what? from Iowa, is the all-time leading scorer no. in the state. Yes. What? Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Cooper He's DeGene. like that. He's him. I never in Cooper a DeGene. years was going to get there. I know. I could have been guessing for 24 hours straight. That's insane. Fucking. No wonder, dude. He's fucking he, – that's a first round athlete if I've ever seen one. What exactly. A beast. That's what I'm saying, dude. Cold ass white. Wow. <laughs> um, Go. That being said, off of that stat, I'm taking Iowa State. Um, Kansas is frauds. We've talked about Kansas being frauds. Kansas is frauds, and I I think this Iowa State team has a lot of fight. Like, and they they play oh, yeah. well at home. Um, Kansas has got to come into their place. So give me Iowa State. Yeah, I mean, again, what we've seen from Kansas on the road, it's not great, and Iowa State. Um, you know, has a really good squad. They're like a scrappy team. They got good hands, um, you know, force a lot of turnovers, kind of like TCU in that sense. I, I will say if Kansas ends up losing at home to Cincinnati, it'll be really hard to like digest Pick. the fact that they're going to lose two, two three in a row. Actually. Yeah. Um, but assuming they pull through and beat Cincinnati. Yeah. I'll go Iowa state here uh, for sure. Yep. Which takes us to another big 12 game. You know what bothers me, Cody? I don't know if you probably have ESPN Plus because you're, like, smart. But I don't. And the Big 12 is – they're putting all of their games on the big or on ESPN Plus, And I, I don't have it. So I can't watch them. It's really bothersome. Yeah. I mean, I, I do have ESPN Plus. But it's not because I pay for it. It's because I use a friend of mine's. Um, right. But... Which, fair. I mean, there, there's a way I could get it. But I, I feel like I'm just – boycotting the annoyance of it like that's fair. i want like, i don't, kansas, bl- I, don't blame State, you. I think that's the cbs game we're gonna get raft three for the kansas iowa state game which is great yeah but texas tech oklahoma i guarantee that's on espn plus that like uh kansas oklahoma that three versus nine matchup from two weeks ago espn plus and i was like all right yeah so i guess i'm not watching this top 10 matchup because i don't pay for your fucking paywall bothers me a lot but that being said texas tech oklahoma um, I'm going to go Oklahoma here again. I don't really know why Texas Tech is ranked still. Are they ranked still, or is this they updated? Are, nope, this is updated. Texas Tech is 20th. How? I guess they came back and beat BYU. So I mean, they're 15 whatever. and three. Yeah, I I really think 
I, I think they have a good defense. I, I, I don't think they're a top 10 team in the Big 12. I'm, I'll just say that. I don't. Okay. I think they're more towards the bottom. Now, that with that being said, the Big 12 has 10 really good teams or 10 to like 12 really good teams. Um, but I, I think Oklahoma is better for sure, so I'm going Oklahoma. I disagree. I think Texas Tech mm. is better, so I'm going Texas mm. Tech. A true battle. Pretty, so pretty straightforward to, analysis on that one. Uh, I think this we'll team is to, better, so they will win. <laughs> we'll talk uh, about that next week, see who was right. Yep. Um, Seton Hall Marquette, we, uh, we skipped over on the show sheet, but we got to talk about it briefly because the Big East has been so damn awesome. Um, I'm taking Seton Hall in this one. Marquette has been such a weird team. This is a team that I don't understand why they're ranked number 14. They're, right. They have five losses. Like, I think they could end up being a top 15 at the end of the year, but I don't think they deserve to be now. Um, that being said, I like Seton Hall a lot. Um, they've won like a, a handful of games in a row here. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken. Well, they, they lost to Creighton in triple overtime on Saturday. Okay. Yeah. So they lost to Creighton in triple overtime, but before that beat St. John's Butler, Georgetown, beat Marquette at home, Providence. Like they've been on a little bit of a roll. That triple overtime game, it sucks, but. They are one of UConn's only losses, right? So like they can beat anyone um, and they are electric. And Shaheen Holloway is doing such a fantastic job. It's crazy because they're like 60th in the net. Because again, a lot of these wins are, you know, they're, they're, they're barely winning and whatnot. Like, so they're not getting as big of a boost as they should be. But resume wise, as far as quad one goes and like, these big time wins and moments are they're playing incredibly in these big moments that 28 0 run should get you 10 points in the net alone. <laughs> but like, I, I do think Shane Holloway has a good argument for coach of the year. Cause Seton hall was a, a no shot for the tournament. And now right now, I think a lot of people have him as a six, seven, eight seed, which is yep. crazy going into Marquette. I don't think this is a punishable loss. If Seton hall does lose, uh, I don't I see agree. Marquette losing to Seton hall twice. Um, I do think Marquette does have more talent technically. And I think things are going to kind of come together for Marquette uh, as the season progresses uh, with Igadoro, who hasn't been playing that great. Kolek needs to find his form shooting. Maybe we see that today or on, on Saturday. So I'm going Marquette in that game with a decent amount of confidence. Fair, 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 totally fair. Um, that being said, keep it moving. Um, we have Nebraska at Maryland. I'm going to be honest. I kind of think this Maryland team stinks. Is it because they scorned me in in the last matchup? Maybe. Maybe it is. But that being said, Nebraska has been a very, very fun team. Um, Big Ten play hasn't been super kind to them. But they did beat Purdue. They rushed the court. They've beat Northwestern. Um, I will feel differently about this game if they lose to Ohio State at home tomorrow. Um, on Tuesday. So that being said, though, I'm still going to roll with Nebraska. We'll see. Yeah. I, we're, we're in that era now of the unranked big 10 teams that are playing each other. And there's so many of them throughout the week and all of them like matter, but they don't. Cause it's like, it's just, everything's going to work itself out. So like Nebraska could lose this game to Maryland. Yeah. Here's a, a quick stat for you. There is one Big Ten team that has a winning record on the road. One. It is Purdue at yeah. three and two. Every other Big Ten team. Actually, Illinois is the only team that's 500 on the road. They're two and two. Every other team in the Big Ten has a losing record on the road, which is crazy. I wonder, I feel like that stat might be conference wide. Like that might be. You could look at the ACC and all these other conferences because, again, the road has been so much harder this year for some fucking reason. But, um, yeah, I, I, I like definitely think Maryland could win this game. Um, you know, Jameer Young is capable of scoring 40 points if he wants. Julian Reese is capable of putting up 25 and 15. Um, but, like, I guess Nebraska is just the better team. Um, it's so hard. I, I'm going to go Maryland. I, I'm changing it. I'm going Maryland. Maryland at home is kind of – oh, wait. I actually have Maryland in here already. So, yeah, I'm going <laughs> – nice. they're just a different beast at home. That's funny. Oh, yeah. I, there you go. I almost talked myself out of it. All right. Um, Texas – Who are you B- going? Huh? I'm going Nebraska going? in that one. 
I'm going okay. Nebraska in that one. I don't love it, but I'm going Nebraska. Um, Texas at BYU. This should be a good game. I called Texas frauds. Um, I said that whoever won the Baylor Texas game was least like less fraudulent, but still fraudulent. Um, and then I said that Texas was fraudulent. And I'm going to sit here and I'm going to die on that goddamn hill. Give me BYU uh, at home. Like yeah, we said, I tough mean, place to play. That Texas Baylor game was crazy, right? Um, Tyrese Hunter, buzzer beater at the end there. It really was just like both teams are fraudulent kind of game. Like obviously Texas ends up winning at home. Yeah. But – I, it doesn't make me think that Texas is like back or good, really. So I'm also going to go BYU. I don't love it because I do have BYU beating Houston um, early. Like, th- there's a real chance BYU just has a bad week and loses both. But I am taking them to win both these games, uh, which is kind of a, a risk here. But I like BYU in this one. Yep. Ah, uh, here we uh, go. Keep it- we got the game of the week. Your your boys, the uh, the Clemson Tigers going into Cameron Indoor Stadium. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what the spread is on this game. It's going to be too large. It's going to be too large. Like, I, I know we had talked in the first part of this episode in the blind resume portion between Clemson and Duke. And these teams are a lot closer than what the – because the public is going to love Duke. This team is – like, Clemson is a lot closer than that. I picked Duke to win this game because it is at home, but this game is going to be a hell of a lot closer than I think what the line comes out at. So give me Duke, but um, tell me, tell me who you, uh, who you've gotten this one. Obviously no bias. There is no bias. I I genuinely um, look at this. I have been looking at this game, right? Like I thought Clemson was definitely going to lose to Miami. I, I thought that Virginia tech game, there was a very good chance Clemson would lose that one. I've been circling this on my calendar as like Clemson's biggest opportunity to get that like statement um, win in the ACC. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, we have to go into North Carolina. I don't think we're winning that game. And then there aren't really that many other opportunities in the ACC this year, sadly. Um, so this is the moment you have to go into Cameron indoor where Georgia tech played Duke really close. Like Cameron indoor hasn't been as Cameron indoor as it usually is because i think Mm -hmm. duke's just not that great like the thing with clemson is they've been losing when the opposing team is just lights out from three i don't know if you watched that georgia tech game that went into double overtime um i did not last monday wednesday or something but it basically every three was covered and every one of them was going in it was nuts against miami in the second half miami shot 78 percent from the field and scored 60 points that's not even a joke it's yeah. not even a joke. Like, it, and I don't think Duke has the capability to get that lights out from three. Virginia mm-hmm. Tech, they're known for their white guards that shoot, right? Padula yeah. and Hunter Couture. And, and Sean Padula sets a school record with like 10 threes in that game. I just don't see Duke killing us from distance like that. And if they don't, then I genuinely think Clemson is the better team. I think we have the better talent. I think we're more mature. I, like... I mean, we were up ranked like number nine at one point. Like I do, I think Duke is way over ranked right now. We did the blind resumes. Yep. Clemson has the better resume. It, like I, I, it's tough because it's going into Duke and it's a tough place to win. But if Clemson's going to do something like that in the ACC and get that statement win, it has to be this week. And you have a week to prepare and rest up. So give me Clemson. Fair enough. No um, bias. No bias. Um, Ole Miss at no Texas bias. A&M. Um, I'm going to be honest. I think Texas a and blows them out of the water. They need this game. They need this game a hell of a lot more than Ole Miss needs this game. Texas A&M is trying to stay alive in the SEC. Um, they're two and three right now. Obviously, that's not ideal, but they need a win. I think they get one. So give me Texas A&M yeah. at home. I think this is going to be a really close game, but it's really like a testament to the fact that we had Ole Miss ranked for so long. It's just Chris Beard yeah. is a great coach because this is year one and Ole Miss does not have much talent and they shouldn't no. be good. And they went undefeated in, in non-conference. Um, and a lot of people that, you know, aren't looking into how they went undefeated are like, Oh my God, Ole Miss, Chris Beard, blah, blah, blah. They're barely beating teams. They're not a good team. They're going to crumble and finish like six and 14 in the sec. Yeah. And they're going to lose this game. 
because again, like you said, Texas A&M needs it more, but I do think it'll be like 75, 70 type vibe, not necessarily a blowout. Like Fair. Ole Miss was blown out by Auburn. Right. So Fair. But we're, we're on the same page there. Yep. Um, TCU at Baylor, Baylor at home. I don't think there's a, a ton of like TCU. I think the slippers kind of falling off the shoe a little bit with Cinderella here. Like I, I don't love this TCU team. Um, so I'm going to take Baylor at home. Um, you have Baylor in that one as well. You got anything? I do. There's on? nothing I need to add really. I kind of agree. Like TCU is just not like they're good. They could easily make the tournament, but they're not like this, you know, top 20 team that you need to worry about, especially when you're at home. Mm. Baylor needs this win. They just lost to Texas on the road. Yeah, I agree. And then lastly, Arizona at Oregon, Pac-12 after dark. Um, I actually just changed this based on the fact that Arizona seems like they're just losing to every competent Pac-12 team on the road this year. Mm -hmm. They lost to Stanford. Stanford's not good. They're competent. Not yeah. good. They lost to Washington yeah. State. Same thing. Oregon is a perfect example of a team that's like right there. And, you know, maybe they get an 11 seed in the tournament. If they win this, they probably will. Uh, but for logic's sake, for pattern's sake, I'm going Oregon. But I totally get why you're going Arizona. Yeah. I, I mean, Arizona's just the far more talented team. But mm -hmm. like they, they could drop it, which would be crazy. That would make Oregon the leader of the pack in the Pac 12. Um, oh wow, yeah, which is crazy. But there sure. are four Pac-12 teams that are undefeated at home: Arizona, Oregon, Utah, and Colorado are all undefeated at home. Um, yeah, which is is pretty crazy. Um, Colorado undefeated at home and completely defeated on the road. So yes, and they lost by fifty to Arizona on the road. <laughs> yeah, absolutely huge difference there absolutely brutal so yeah I'm, I'm riding with arizona in this one um a lot of great games this week nick anything else uh we got before you head um uh cody i'm I, all i gotta say is is go ravens and uh if next week we'll be seeing if if the boys are in the super bowl which will be cool yep. non-basketball related but i'm locked in i'm dialed yeah for the I afc north are you rooting for the Ravens or are you rooting for the Chiefs here? I'm rooting for the Ravens just because I cannot stand Chiefs fans online. Uh, I, I think they are the most think, one of the most insufferable fan bases we've seen in a long time. I so. think a lot of people agree with you there. So, um, yeah, go Ravens. Yep. That's well, <laughs> either way, we will make sure to do a Super Bowl preview episode. So make sure you guys subscribe in order to uh, in order to not miss that. Um, obviously Nick and I are putting all our bets and stuff on our social media. So make sure you follow Twitter, Instagram, all of that, uh, TikTok, all that stuff is linked in the description below in the podcast and on the YouTube page. Um, like, and subscribe, all that good stuff. Nick and I are going to go watch the end of this Cincinnati, Kansas game, because it looks like it's going to be a good one and we will see you in the next one. Adios.